today. AMD's new CPUs are priced to the moon. RX 7000 adds support for this. GPU price drops about to stop. And Intel's ultimate deception. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, AMD recently announced that their next-gen Threadripper 5000 CPUs would finally be making their way to the DIY market later this year. And that was definitely exciting for anyone needing more PCI Express lanes or a ton of CPU cores. Well, it looks like you may want to hold off on that excitement, as AMD officially revealed the pricing of their Pro Threadripper lineup. And let's just say your wallet will cry. Starting things off, the 24-core CPU is $2,399, the 32-core part is $3,299, and the 64-core part, make sure you're sitting for this, is $6,499. For those who don't know, that's $2,509 more than the 64-core Threadripper 3000 part and $1,100 more than the Pro part. Of course, AMD has ended the non-Pro Threadripper lineup with their 5000 series, so it's a massive jump for anyone coming from their non-pro series. Really, I'd say this will likely price a ton of people out of AMD's Threadripper lineup, and I think that's really sad given AMD really knocked it out of the park with their HEDT series when it first launched. But clearly the company is done playing around with reasonable prices. Once again, this proves the importance of competition. If you haven't heard, the computer science field is in massive demand, and it's only set to get bigger. The U.S. Department of Labor projects a growth of 13% from 2020 to 2030, and includes a median annual wage of $97,430. So there's a huge reason to learn the computer field, and there's no better place to get started than with this video's sponsor, Brilliant, the place that was made to teach the STEM field, and that includes computer science. But unlike other learning platforms, Brilliant's courses are made by some of the brightest minds from Google, MIT, Microsoft, and more, so you know what you're learning is right. And if you're someone who learns visually like most do, Brilliant was made for you, because they teach you by having you do it yourself with fun, interactive puzzles. And the best part is that you can learn for free today when you visit brilliant.org slash gamermeld, and the first 200 of you who visit the link will get 20% off the annual premium. Once again, that's brilliant.org slash gamermeld. Next up for today, AMD's upcoming RX 7000 GPUs looks to add a new feature that will challenge NVIDIA on a brand new front. In a recent discovery, AMD apparently updated their LLVM compiler to add a new instruction called Wave Matrix Multiply Accumulate, and the new instructions will apparently be supported in GFX 11, which is their next-gen RDNA 3 architecture. What this new instruction does is support processing of 16 by 16 by 16 size tensors in F P16 and BF16. What this means is that AMD should be adding support for matrix operations, and that means AMD is likely adding something similar to NVIDIA's tensor cores on their next-gen GPUs. What's really surprising about this is that in a recent interview, AMD actually made it seem like they weren't going to add tensor cores to their next-gen GPUs, but this looks to prove otherwise. If so, AMD could be preparing something similar to NVIDIA's DLSS. The weird part is that this would mean AMD really doesn't think they can do the same with their FSR tech. Maybe that's why they made it seem like they weren't going to release Tensor Cores? I'm not sure. I guess time, as always, will tell. Next up, it looks like GPU price drops could soon come to an end. In a new report from DigiTimes and translated by Retired Engineer on Twitter, AMD, Nvidia, and Apple are all trying to cut orders from TSMC. Specifically, Apple is cutting orders for their next-gen iPhones thanks to shipment targets falling by 10%. AMD is apparently cutting 7 and 6 nanometer orders by a whopping 20,000, and Nvidia is hoping to cut orders for their next-gen RTX 4000 cards. Now, not so surprisingly, TSMC isn't actually willing to cut orders for NVIDIA. Instead, they're willing to delay shipments by one quarter or until Q1 of next year. All in all, this isn't a big surprise. AMD and NVIDIA likely placed massive orders expecting demand to remain at a huge level. But given the crypto crash happened and miners are selling GPUs left and right, demand is obviously going to be much lower than anticipated. According to the report, NVIDIA has enormous channel 
internal inventory as well as the influx in used GPUs from miners, so it makes sense, especially given a new report by Bloomberg where one estimate claims that over a third of consumer GPUs were being bought by miners. And this is why manufacturers can be slow to ramp up production. No one wants to be left holding the proverbial bag. The only issue with companies cutting orders is that we may not see massive drops in prices that we may have seen otherwise. Of course, these are for future orders, so for now, prices will likely continue to fall at least a little, but this very well could make them come to a screeching halt. And lastly for today, Intel's deception apparently knows no bounds. If you remember a little while back, Intel promised to release an updated driver for Arc by the end of April. That driver was supposed to give users an option to disable specific optimizations that were made for synthetic 3D Mark tests. The reason is because the makers of 3D Mark have a rule that you can't have optimizations for it. Given you know it's literally the same scene every time, and it probably wouldn't be that hard to game the system. Something Intel clearly wasn't above doing, but because of that, UL wouldn't validate their 3D Mark scores. Of course, if you follow the channel, you know April came and went, yet Intel never released their driver. Well, it's finally here, and guess what Intel did? When you look at the description, Intel says, quote, a new feature now available within Arc Control that allows users to select and enable advanced application optimization Optimizations. The initial implementation of the feature only affects 3D Mark Time Spy and 3D Mark Port Royal. That's right, Intel is billing this as some new feature, yet it was literally already there. The update was made so you could turn it off. All I can say is wow, it's uncanny how Intel can spin a very clear negative into a positive. Technically, this driver makes their GPUs worse, given you need to turn the toggle off to get actually valid scores. And from what we've seen, Arc is a whopping 15% slower in Time Spy and 4% slower in Port Royal. So yeah, Intel, Deception, they really seem to go hand in hand sometimes. This is nothing but confusing, infuriating, annoying, just ugh. So while that does it for today, deception aside, are you still excited for Intel's upcoming Arc GPUs? Or are you more pumped for AMD and Nvidia's next gen? Let me know down in the comments below. And definitely make sure to check out Brilliant at brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And as always, have a great day!